Uncle Joseph Gallen, and I would like to welcome our live studio audience, our viewers and listeners to this evening's program in our Root and Branch Association English Language Conference and Lecture Series held at the OU Israel Center in Jerusalem, Israel. I am happy to share that we are now celebrating the uh, 23rd and a half year of our conference and lecture series which began in January 1995. In a moment I will introduce our program chair, Dr. Les Glassman, originally of South Africa, and uh, we both welcome our speaker this evening, Dr. Michelle Calvo, who is the author of The Middle East and World War III, Why No Peace? We want you all to buy Dr. Calvo's book, which has a foreword by Colonel Richard Kemp, the former commander of British forces in Afghanistan. The title of this evening's talk is have we begun World War III, as experts and Pope Francis already stated, in 2014? Can we stop it? Today is Wednesday, June 27, 2018, the 14th uh, day of, or in a few minutes, the 15th day of Tammuz 5778. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Glassman, who will say a few remarks to introduce our speaker in his beautiful South African Commonwealth English as opposed to my New Yorkese, Dr. Glassman. Thank you, Lao, <clears throat> and welcome everybody. It's a, indeed a great honor and a privilege to have you, Dr. Ma uh, Michael Calvert, here this evening. Um, and just I want to reiterate uh, Lowell's uh, words this is really a quite a unique book. Um, what makes this book, I think, different from all other books is that uh, Michael's done something uh, extraordinary. Inside the book, you have the, a QR. It's like a, um, you use a smartphone and you, with a code bar, and the book comes alive. You actually see video clips from the internet, and it's for free, and it just makes the book really come alive, which is actually very, very unique. Those living here in Yerushalayim, there's a bird sanctuary, I don't know if you've been to it, where they've also got different stations at the bird sanctuary and you use your phone and then you, you put your barcode on and then when you look watching the birds, you'll actually see a documentary on the birds as well. So Michael's done this in this book and it really is very important because he's selected some incredible videos that you can see on the internet. It's right here for everybody to see. And it really is quite unique. Now, Michael is a, a lawyer, a lawyer, and he's got a, a, a doctor of um, a doctor of law from the Sorbonne in France, and um, he's also a member of the Israel Bar and the French Bar. I'm a member of the French Bar uh, in Paris, and he's a former member of the ICC. It's the International Criminal Court. Um, no, no, no. Uh, international. Arbitration. Yeah, of arbitration. Um, international, court, international Court of Arbitration. Okay, the International, so okay, I'm thank you for creating the International Court of Arbitration. And um, I think without any further ado, we're all very excited to hear what you have to say tonight. I just want to mention when you, when you read the title of the book, Why No Peace? Maybe you can mention maybe there is a possibility of peace. Yes. I think we're all looking for peace. Um, we say shalom every day, we say shalom so many times, we pray for peace. So, um, is there any way that we can, why no peace, why, how to attain peace as well? Yeah, it's, uh, if you ask the good questions, why no peace, you can find the answer. Okay, so without any further ado. When you know the cause, you can, uh, you can uh, resolve sometimes the problem. I would like to add something since I am a lawyer, I take the precaution to ask the people who did these videos, which I have cited in my book, to authorize me to, to use them. And uh, I got the authorization from memory, from Mr. Pierre Rehov, 
from um, from um, uh, Palestinian Media Watch. Um, even though uh, it's possible to do this kind of thing, since we, uh, when we are citing article in books, we have the possibility to go in library and uh, and see the articles. So this way you can see also articles. Uh, there are some articles that I selected, which are important. You can see them. You can so give, get them on, on, uh, on from the internet on your smartphone. This is the bar, yeah, this is the barcode? Yes, that's, uh, that's right. And uh, it happened that one day I woke up and I said to my wife, I know what I have to do to, to enable the readers to at the same time to see the book and, uh, and to see videos uh, and not go on to their computer and type right again the URL, HTTP and something like that. Can I just ask you, before we start, your forward is by Colonel Richard Kemp. And I don't know, I'm sure all here in the audience knows Richard, I've met him, and uh, he came to speak for one of our BITS alumni um, evenings. Richard is a unique, he got an honorary doctorate from Barry Lund University. He's the, I don't know if you're all aware, Richard uh, appeared on BBC when they had the Gaza War, and the, um, the person who was interviewing him said, what do you think of the situation, the bad situation in Gaza? And Richard turned around and said, Wow, there's never been an army like the Israeli army that's cared so much about civilians. And she was in shock and then explained. Um, she said, what do you think the British and the uh, American forces are doing in Iraq and Afghanistan? And he said that the Israeli army takes such precautions to, to save uh, human life. And I think BBC and the world got such a shock that here you had somebody who was not from the Israeli government, somebody who was head of the British armed forces, as they all said, in Afghanistan, Telling the truth, telling exactly how the Israeli army takes such precautions to try to save civilian life. And that was not shown, it was not part of the, um, what was shown on, on, on the TV when they showed the, the coverage of what was happening in Gaza. It was totally something different. So to have the forward by Colonel Richard Kemp, that is really, how did you manage to get uh, Richard to do the forward of your book? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I dare, I dare. I met him once. And I said to him that uh, I wrote a book uh, about the Middle East and uh, the situation in the world, and uh, I asked him if he would accept to read the manuscript. So I sent him the. Ma he said yes. Uh, uh, I sent him the manuscript, and by um, uh, I sent him in fact five by uh, to his email, and then after a, a month and a half, he replied. And uh, he was very busy, uh, but uh, I am sure that he, he read the book, perhaps not totally because he is so busy, and uh, he accepted to uh, to write uh, this forward. I was very glad because I'm not a military man. I don't know a lot about uh, about uh, the subject, um, but I am a, a lawyer who is uh, who knows about international law and criminal law and um, uh, international criminal law. Uh, I must state that uh, I had to, to, to study this subject with my wife, who was a professor. She wrote several books on international criminal law and the procedure before the ICC, the International Criminal Court, yeah. as opposition to the over ICC. And um, so, um, uh, I have some knowledge on this subject, but uh, it was it was good to have his uh, his forward because uh, I I I think I didn't say anything uh, any uh, anything wrong uh, on the military aspect, and on the other aspect I had uh, also a good article in the Jerusalem Post by uh, by a former ambassador of Israel in Canada, um, Mr. Ambassador Alan Baker who was in the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs in the legal department for years. I mean, he did all his, all his life there. And uh, he stated that I am an expert in international law, which time I become an expert, yes. Okay. So uh, how we're going to work it tonight is, uh, Mark, we, I'm sure we're all intrigued to hear what you have to say. And I'm going to um, leave the mic with you. And then after uh, Mark's given his uh, presentation, we'll open the floor to questions. So without further ado, Mark, if you can explain the process of your book and the highlights, 
and the comments that you've received, and then the audience will ask our questions. So without any further ado, thank you. But this is not the, the, the subject. And this is not really the subject of it. <laughs> so if you want, I am, go I am going to speak about uh, every Began World War Three has uh, some expert and, uh, and um, the pop stated several times, and can we stop it? Um, do you mind if I, I, if I go over here? No, no. Or if no. I bring this here? Thank you. Speaking about World War Three, we are thinking about uh, nuclear war. And um, um, when the question was asked to, uh, to um, Einstein, he said, uh, I don't know what will be World War III, but I can tell you that World War IV will be uh, with sticks and uh, with sticks and stones. Um, so we could think now <laughs> that we could have a war, we could think that we could have a, right, a war between the US Russia and some rising power like China, but it is not the case apparently. Uh, we could also view a nuclear war involving Iran or and or North Korea. And um, if you have questions about that, I will be glad to answer. So leading leading experts and, uh, and Pope Francis have said that the world has already entered World War Three, and. Um, Who was the expert? The expert are, are people from the uh, IDC. Uh, among them, an expert whose name is Boaz Ganor. Uh, he said it is a war of a, of a culture of Islamic radicalism against the rest of the world, which includes the majority of Muslim world war. And um, he said essentially the Muslims have a responsibility to deal with those bad seeds which are coming from Islam. Uh, in June, uh, he said that in 2011. After that, we, uh, we, um, we heard about uh, the Pope stating the same thing, uh, stating we are now in World War III. It was in, uh, June, in June 2014, when he came back from North Korea, from a visit from North Korea. And uh, some months after, in September, uh, when uh, he said that world conflicts today with a kind of crime, massacre, and destruction being involved could be called a peaceful third world war. He said also that World War Three is already here. And uh, he said that the war is over jihadist terrorism. Uh, he said again, said again, peaceful World War III, when he was referring to the attack in Paris. And uh, in February uh, 2016, he gave some more details. Uh, he said, uh, he referred to uh, the many country of uh, Middle East and North Africa, uh, whose family villages and cities of our brother and sister in Christ are being completely exterminated. And he was uh, referring also to the mass exodus of, uh, of Christians from Syria and Iraq. And he was mentioning also the, the fate of the Yazidi. Um, he said, after that, again, he said in July 2016, this time, he said again that it entered, the world entered World War III. So there is one question, why did he, did he say something? About that, why is focusing uh, is he focusing on all on World War Three and jihadist terrorism? Um, and why did he say uh, in November 2017 that uh, the world seems to be headed into war, perhaps bigger, bigger than any before? He's the only one to have said this kind of thing among the world leaders. No other world leaders has stated anything like that. It is, it is as if they are afraid to, to state and to analyze the reality. Um, 
some people are saying that uh, some people are saying that he he knows some secret from uh, from some uh, visionaries from uh, Lourdes um, uh, or uh, from Portugal. Um, but it is true that the jihad which uh, which existed against Israel, which began a long time ago, uh, with our uh, thousand two hundred women, children, and men who were killed during the Intifada, and uh, 88,000 people who were injured. It is true that this jihad extended to the world. Um, when we were attacked, no one came uh, to support us. And when we provided the uh, Europeans uh, videos of Iman who were, who were inciting the crowds, not far away from here on the Temple Mount, to kill the Christian, to conquer, to conquer uh, Rome, uh, to destroy America, and to take over Paris. No one reacted, and everything. Everybody was thinking that it was something local. Uh, the history of jihad against Israel began uh, began uh, in. Uh, <coughs> Began a long time ago, and uh, the the world was thinking that if we could divide the land and and uh, and give part of the land to the Muslims and part of the land to the Jews, then we will uh, we will resolve this uh, this hatred. Um, because everyone was thinking that it was a territorial conflict, and the problem in the Middle East is that everyone is focused on this subject and treat the subject as a territorial conflict, then no one has seen or understood that it is not a territorial conflict, but it is a, a theological conflict, a religious conflict, theological front, conflict, and even a metaphysical conflict. Uh, this could be, uh, could be the subject of a, a full uh, conference. But already in... Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, 1935, uh, the Muslim scholars took some fatwas and uh, again prohibiting peace and normalization with the Jews. And um, the University of Al Azhar ruled that it was a duty for all Muslims to engage jihad to salvage Palestine. So uh, in 1989, they went a, a little further and they said that it was prohibited for Muslims to give any part of Palestine. It means to have peace or, or peace against territory with uh, the Jews. What happened is that we, we, we had new actors in the Middle East. Um, the, we have the Iranian Mullahs in the uh, 79, the Hezbollah in uh, 82, the Hamas in 87, Al-Qaeda in 88, and the Islamic State in 2006. And uh, the Palestinian leaders, the Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, which, was, uh, which was created in 1921, the Saudi Arabia Wahhabis, the Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and the Iranian Mullah and uh, their government all share the same belief. The belief is un encapsulated, as uh, someone said, someone is Mrs. Pascale Covarda, who was uh, a former Minister of Migration and Displacement in Iraq. She said, she said before the Congress, Allah is our goal, the Prophet is our ideal, the Quran is our constitution, Jihad is our way, the death for the sake of Allah is our aspiration. She stated that, um, she is not a Muslim, but she stated that this ideology, um, which control uh, uh, all these groups, um, um, is based on, on the Quran and the Hadith, which is the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad.
for Europol, because it's interesting to see what the European police is thinking about jihadist, how they define the Jihadist Terrorist Act, um, to understand their vision, the vision of the European, they are saying the Jihadist Terrorist Act are those that are committed out of a mindset that reject democracy on religious grounds and use the historical comparison with the crusades of the Middle Age to describe current situations in which it is believed that Sunni Islam is facing a crusader alliance composed of Shi'is, Christians and Jews. It's very, it's very strange because they have a, a different vision of, uh, uh, of the reality. It's like uh, being on a different angle. Um, the ideology which, uh, which justify the killing of Jews and infidels, wherever they are and wherever they are found, from New York to Mumbai, Paris, Boston, San Francisco, uh, San Bernardino, Orlando, Jerusalem, and uh, uh, Moscow, uh, St. Petersburg, Berlin, Manchester, London, and as far away as uh, uh, China, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and the Philippines, um, this, uh, this uh, uh, jihad which justify this um, is, that, um, is that they have, the jihadists have to, to conquer uh, the power in Muslims or Arab countries and, uh, and to kill as much um, uh, infidels which are, which are in Europe, I mean which are not in European countries. Uh, they are thinking at the same time that once a land has been under the control of uh, uh, Muslims that it must return to Muslim rules. Um, uh, the, same, the same theory is applied to Palestine. There cannot be a Jewish state on that land. Uh, it is difficult to understand that because um, even for Muslim like uh, someone that you probably know, Khaled Abu Tomai, who, li who lives in, uh, in Jerusalem, he said Jews who have lived continuously in biblical Canaan or Judea for several, for 3,000 years, might well wonder how they can be accused of occupying their own land. We must, uh, we must add that uh, Muslim con conquest uh, led to the application of Muslim rules in part of Spain, France, Austria, Italy, Russia, India, and part of China, and done to the Philippines, and we, we hear that uh, what is happening in the Philippines, the Philippines these days. So the Turk went also to the door of, of Vienna. So uh, when you have, uh, when you think we, this, we have you, this theory that once a land has been conquered, it remains um, an Islamic land for eternity. Um, when you understand that, there is no reason not to conquer again these, these lands. Um, and a culture of crimes, um, that is to kill or to be killed, has been developed around the world. And uh, this culture has been developed to a certain degree in the Palestinian Authority uh, territories. Welcome. To come back to the to the um, to the. Um, the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. Uh, if the conflict is analyzed as a religious metaphysical dispute with Jerusalem in, in the center of it, a territorial compromise demanded from Israel will not resolve it. Um, it can only it can only be, be a step 
toward Israel total destruction. The analysis which has been made by the Pope has been uh, also mentioned by uh, a minister who is a very nice minister, he's a Druze, um, he's Yahob, Yahoub Kara, who stated uh, when he sees what is happening in, in, the, in the region, he stated the following. The agenda both of a region and of radical Islam is not two states, but one large Islamic state with a caliph as its ruler, as it was 50 years ago. We see that Christians are disappearing from Iraq and Syria, just as it is with the Druze, the Yazidi, the Hamadis, the Baha'i and the Turkmen, as well as other sects and ethnicity who find themselves being executed. This has no connection to Israel. So if you hear someone who says that uh, we are responsible for what is happening in the world, you can, you can answer them. But you have one minister who is a Druze, who has understood much better than anyone else the situation. And he says also, this ethnic, ethnic cleansing of anyone who is not Muslim this is ethnic cleansing of anyone who is not Muslim, and this might lead us to a third world war, with every indication that it will not end here, but will continue on in the direction of Europe. What is the future? Let us uh, try to do some perspect perspective. Um, first, the radicalization of uh, Muslim states and the Islamization of his, his Christian country from within through terror are the main agenda of radical ex Islam. Uh, we have to, to understand and to know that the European way of thinking that the Muslims that they have inside their country would abandon their religion they will become like uh, like it happened to be uh, to be in history. The Italian become French. Uh, the uh, some German, the Pol Polish came to France and became French. And uh, with the migration, the people assimilated to the, 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 the population uh, where they were coming. And uh, we must say that and uh, recall that um, 50. Must 57 Muslim states, which are members of ISECO, ISESCO, the Islamic Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which operate uh, within the organization of Islamic states, uh, adopted a resolution, uh, which is uh, a resolution which, which uh, in, by which they undertook to protect these uh, Muslim population, they stated that the common link between all these people from different nationality who came to Europe um, have a common link, uh, and the common link is between them is Islam, uh, and uh, it is unifying all the Muslim communities outside of Islamic world. And they need to have uh, social and religious institution. It becomes urgent. Uh, and uh, we Muslims feel responsible to take initiative for themselves. So there is a clear, a clear uh, uh, endeavor from uh, these 57 states to uh, to continue and to uh, to, uh, to promote. Islam inside inside uh, Europe, and they, they even stated we even find that these social and religious institutions have become popular inside the civil society, and have contributed to the conversion into Islam of many native citizens. And meanwhile, the number of uh, Muslims uh, in Europe increased. In December uh, 2012, um, the glo um, uh, glo Global Religious Landscape Report um, 
which was uh, from Kew Research Center, uh, stated that, uh, recorded that there are 43 million Muslims in Europe and about 1.6 billion uh, or 23 percent of Muslims in the world, making uh, Islam the second largest religion. Um, and then we have to add the two millions um, who came, uh, who came in, in, since 2015 in, in Europe, bringing uh, a culture with rad radically different values. Uh, the Western reaction was, uh, was, uh, was, I mean, there were no real Western reaction except one which was taken by, uh, which was one of, uh, of President Bush in 2005. Uh, uh, discussing the war on terror in uh, October 2005, he stated, the militant believe that controlling one country will rely, will rally the Muslim masses, enabling them to overthrow all moderate government in the region and to establish a radical Islamic empire that spans from Spain to Indonesia. With greater economic and military and political power, the terrorists will be able to advance their own agenda to develop weapon of mass destruction to destroy Israel, to intimidate Europe, to assault the American people and to blackmail our government into isolation. And uh, as a result of that analysis, Bush uh, increased uh, uh, the fight in Afghanistan uh, with the support of some European states and also in Iraq who was a base for Al-Qaeda affiliates. Um, President Obama cited, cited, uh, cited, with, cited with the Muslim Brotherhood, but he continued we have record, to recognize that he continued the actions against Al-Qaeda, and he succeeded to, to put an end to the life of, uh, of his leader. But we have to understand also that there was a great mistake which was done, which gave rise and strength to ISIS. Uh, in fact, the Iraqi government and the American disregarded the Iraqi studies. And uh, ISIS is also the produce of abuse of human rights in Syria and Iraq. That is a lesson for all of us, stated the Assistant Secretary for Democracy, Human Rights and Labor under the Obama administration, Tom Malinowski. Uh, he is perfectly right. In fact, they have uh, produced, they have produced uh, indirectly ISIS, and uh, by allying with uh, with, um, with the discrimination of uh, of Iraqi government and the uh, Iranian uh, forces, um, and the force of jihad increased also in Africa and also with the, um, with the election of Islamists in uh, several uh, countries. And uh, we, we saw that the Arab Spring was uh, transformed into an Islamic winter to cite, um, to cite this, uh, these two words which were developed by a professor Rafi Israeli. The attack. Uh, the Muslim government in Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, Indonesia, and Egypt, and in African countries, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Cameroon, these countries are Muslim countries, um, um, were attacked. This is uh, what uh, it, it, they were attacked, and, uh, uh, and Bush had, had a, a good analysis when he stated that this is their aim to take over those countries. And these attacks were to destabilize them and to, uh, to provoke their fall. And, but the attacks which were committed in Israel and, uh, and over continents such as America, Europe, Russia, uh, Australia, India, China, uh, constitute another dimension which is, uh, 
which is to kill non-Muslim and Jews in the name of Islam. You remember, you remember all the attacks which happened uh, in France, in London. By the way, uh, we decided in the book to, to put pictures of the attack and some, some list of uh, cities and where the attacks, the attacks occurred. We have to, to, I mean, ISIS is not limited to, uh, to, uh, to those countries. We have uh, Islamic State terrorists operate also in Gaza. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, ISIS affiliated jihadists who, who claim responsibility for sending rockets against uh, Israel. Uh, they, are, they operate in, uh, in the Sinai in Pens Peninsula. Um, and we have to add also that from 2011 to 2014, one million Syrian ref refugees took refuge in Jordan, and uh, a lot of them went to different countries, Turkey, in Greece, and uh, also in Europe. And uh, today, uh, there are between according to some estimates, and uh, 350,000 and 498,000 Muslims and over who have been killed in Syria. And no one is, uh, no one is demonstrating anywhere in the world, which, uh, which, come, uh, which, which lead me to, to come back to the idea that when you kill, 50, when a Jew kill uh, uh, Muslims, they go out, and they attack them, and they, they go to the United Nations, and, 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 and at the same time, they have some minutes of silence in the Security Council. Can you imagine that? I, 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 I propose to, to some of the Israeli leaders to, to provoke a situation where they, they will, the, the Security Council will have to, to take more than a minute of silence, but to take an hour of silence for the Muslim kills killed uh, in Syria. So, if you hear someone who says that the jihad is uh, is a result of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, say that uh, now you have all the tools to to respond to them and. Uh, um, the cause is that the uh, American and the Iraqi uh, disregarding the Sunni in Iraq, uh, the, uh, they didn't have any, any uh, the Obama administration did not have any military, effective military doctrine uh, against, uh, uh, against ISIS. Um, so ISIS is moving into Europe. Uh, at the same time, we have in Europe a lot of, uh, of jihadi who are in jail, who have been arrested and who are in jail, and who are going to be to be released. And to to follow one man, you need 20, 20 uh, investigator, policemen, or uh, 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 spy uh, to control them and to see where they are going. It's not e an easy task. So the the um, the problem is inside, inside the countries, and when we see, when I see, when we think about World War III, we were thinking in different terms. By thinking of war with an army, now we have we have some, some something, something which is inside the country, and the war is coming from inside, uh, and it is going to blow up from inside. Where are we going? Are we going to be? Uh, in a few in a few, in a few year, when we will hear more and more Allahu Akbar, God is great. We all agree that God is great, but the way that they are doing it and they are giving His greatness is against against what is written in the Quran and in the Bible. So, can we stop? Can we stop this kind of uh, of war, which will be from inside? It's like a rotten apple.
you, you, it's very difficult when, uh, I mean, to, to resolve a problem. Some Arabs and uh, Muslim states know the reality and uh, they are acting. Uh, in 2015, um, f for example, uh, President, uh, Egyptian President Al-Sisi Al stated before the al Azhar University in Cairo uh, uh, there, was a, there was a connection in this, um, in this uh, meeting with the Prophet Muhammad upcoming birthday. He said, we are not doing enough with regard to true religious discourse. And he said the problem is not, is not religion, the problem lies in ideology. We must take a long, hard look at the current situation. I have talked about this several times in the past. It is true. He is not lying. I found his, uh, declara his declarations, and they are citing in the book. Uh, we must take a long, hard look at the situation we are in. It is inconceivable that the ideology we sanctify should make our entire nation a source of concern, danger, killing and destruction all over the world. It is inconceivable that this ideology, and he said I am referring not to religion but to ideology, the bodies of ideas and texts that we have sanctified in the course of century to the point of that challenging them has become very difficult, has reached a point that is hostile to the entire world. It is inconceivable that one billion Muslims would kill the world population of seven billion so that they could live on their own. This is incon inconceivable. And he goes a little further, he says, may Allah be a witness on Judgment Day to the truth of your intentions regarding what I have, what, what I say to you today. You must oppose it with resolve. Let me say it again. We need to revolutionize our religion. religion. And he, and speaking to the Grand Sheikh of Al-Azhar, he says, Honorable Iman, you bear responsibility before Allah. The world in its entirety awaits your world, your world because the Islamic nation is being torn apart, destroyed, and is heading to perdition. We ourselves are brigaded to, perdi to perdition. I didn't see any, any, any result from this uh, frank speech on the, um, the Al-Azhar uh, University leaders. So it, may, it seems that we are going to continue is going to continue to speak alone. Uh, they will hear him. They will accept what he says, but no one will take will take any anything because, in fact, if we see the reality, it's not exactly ideology. It's inside the Quran, and uh, I will I will tell you why. I, I mean, I am not telling you. I am going to cite someone an Indo Indonesian who came to visit us some weeks, some one week ago. The same message was, uh, was given, uh, approximately the same message was given by President Bouteflika of, of Algeria. Um, I, was, I was thinking that it was a joke because uh, he, he's so sick and so old, that, um, but he has people who are, who are, who are stating who are working for him. Um, some people are saying that he is not, he is just a president in title, but uh, there is a court which is, uh, which is dealing with all, all the situation. He said, he wrote, he wrote, because it was his, his speech, which was delivered at, uh, at the 35th session of the Arab Council of Interior Minister in 2018. He said, we must call the ulema, religious authorities, and a center of academic research to work for the renovation of religious discourse and its purification of the wandering the, to release the, the fatwa from the hand of a pseudo fukaha. Fukaha means Islamic jurist, expert in Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic law, and to protect Islam against those who want to use it. 
action must begin at home while acting in the direction of the over, which over are the European non-Muslims, which has stigmatized our religion, accusing it of fanatism, extremism, and terrorism. Why this is just pure fabrication that we have to rectify and to correct. So, it's, uh, he is politically correct. But he took some, uh, I mean, he recognized uh, the situation. But what is very important to know, and perhaps there might be some development, and perhaps the, uh, the people who are dealing with, with the Nobel Prize, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, this man um, that we know, you and me, Gabriel um, Galin, has, this, has uh, left our world. But uh, he was a member of, of, a, Nobel, of a Nobel Prize uh, committee. Uh, he, the Nobel Prize committee which was given a lot of peace prize to people who didn't do anything, um, uh, that they were thinking they would do something. Uh, the Nobel Prize should be perhaps given to to um, to um, uh, to someone whose name is uh, is a long name, uh, f f but I would say it's his name is Faco. Uh, he said um, he referred to the Ansar Declaration on Humanitarian Islam, uh, Ansar Declaration of Humanitarian Islam. He's a, a leader in Indonesia of the world's largest Muslim youth organization. And uh, they published a, 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 a long article, a long roadmap to address rapidly the metastasy crisis in the Islamic world. It is, he said, I mean, they say, and he says, in, this, uh, in his declaration, it is false and counterproductive to claim that the actions of Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, and other such groups have nothing to do with Islam or merely represent a perversion of Islamic teaching. They are, in fact, good crowds of Wahhabism and other fundamentalist streams of Sunni Islam. For more than 50 years, Saudi Arabia has systematically propagated the supremacist, ultra-conservative interpretation of Islam among Sunni Muslim population worldwide. So the opposition to Iran, ISIS, and Al-Qaeda does not and should not absolve it from responsibility for promoting the very ideology that underlies and in animates Sunni extremism, extremism and Terror. Muslims face a choice between starkly different vision of a future. They will strive to recreate the long lost ideal of religious, political, and territorial unity beneath the banner of a caliphate, caliphate and thus seek to, respond, to restore Islamic supremacy as reflected in their communal memory and still firmly entrenched with a prevailing corpus and worldwide of orthodox authority. Islam, or they will strive to develop a new religious sensitivity that reflect the actual circumstances of our modern civilization and contribute to the emergence of a truly just and harmonious world order founded upon respect for the equal dignity of right of every human being. Are these called sufficient or not, in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, that the American, the European, the Russian, the Chinese, the Indians uh, should act and pressure the leader of the Muslim state. There are 57, there are 57 Muslim states. I mean, it's not difficult to pressure them. I can assure you, they could, uh, the, for example, the American administration I mean, I, I, I know that, uh, that um, President Trump likes, likes uh, impose tax or to cut funds, so he could, uh, he could extend this policy 
to his uh, to his state, or not to give them armaments or grants. Okay, but he, he made a mistake. He uh, he sold uh, several armaments and sophisticated armaments to Saudi Arabia. Perhaps he spoke about that. I don't know. This is the end of uh, my speech. Do you have some some uh, questions? Yes, it's a lot for their, the site of their country, yes. You said something good about yes. the character of yes, yes. the no, no. dynasty. But they are receiving some funds from the American too. But uh, they could have you refused. They could. Okay. Um, well, we really want to thank you. And uh, before we end our closing, are there any more questions from the floor? Okay, good. Come through to the microphone. Anyone who wants to talk, just uh, got a mic. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Michel, because I know him for a long time. And he has done a very good job. He has done a very good job, and very clear, and a bit, I, I didn't read his book yet, but I think there is plenty of research, and he found a lot of things. But I want to say that somebody else in our tradition found the way to for peace perhaps because in your book you say why no peace i would like you to say next time here is the way to to, to find the peace okay you mentioned it but you say why not okay i didn't read it yet. okay i just wanted to speak about our prophecy our, our prophet daniel 2400 years ago he wrote many things about the four Malchuyot, Malchuyot, uh, Malchuyot uh, between kingdoms. David and the, the kingdoms, between the kingdoms of David and the one to come ours again. Four kingdoms. First was Nabuchodonosor. Everyone was uh, figured by uh, an animal. He was a lion. Nabuchodonosor was a lion. And then it was Paras and Madai, per, you know, eh? it was uh, a dove, dove. Uh, okay. No, uh, <laughs> an ours, an ours, an ours. Ah, an ours, a beer. A beer, a beer. And then the third was, uh, was uh, Greek, Greece, Yavan, Greece, which was an eagle, right. eagle. And then Rome, the fourth one. And he said at that time, 2,400 years ago, everyone had a figure. But the fourth, the one we're living in now, he was a monster. Why he was a monster? Because he said that Esav, Esav, Esav received, uh, was the, the, the king, king Esav, but inside of, of him entered some population, very wide purple population that spoiled him until the end, it, it, will, be, it will be the the last uh, kingdom because this uh, population and he called it he called it at that time already Islam at that time it's written he called it at 2400 years ago it was not existing in Islam. I know but he said this word he said before before it was existing so I mean we are living what our prophet said before and we know that the end of this uh, of this period which, is, which will be an, at least uh, the most at the, at the end of six million array, we'll, we come back to the, the kingdom of Israel again, and the peace will come at that time. Well, that's, that's it. <laughs> Do you want to make a comment? Or? Yes, okay. you have a question? I'll, I'll come on up to the mic. Yeah. Sure, 
Roy really need the mic. Uh, I have a very simple question, but it may be very relevant. If Dr. Calvo could tell us how many prisoners um, are actually supposed to be released within five years in France. I am referring to the prisoners that are um, that have been indoctrinized and have been fanatized inside the prisons to some sort of jihad. How many are there? Are we speaking of hundred or thousand or ten thousand or what? We are speaking. We are speaking about hundreds. Um, there were a uh, number of suspects which were uh, arrested uh, for religiously inspired jihadist terrorism, according to uh, to the uh, the Europol. Um, where the following: we had uh, in in 2013 uh, we had 216 who were arrested. In 2014, 395. In uh, in 2015, 687. In 2016, uh, 15, 16 now, 718. And in 2017, 705. So uh, let's imagine that these people will one day or another be go out, and. Uh, but this is not this is not exactly this, the only this uh, problem the, the only problem they have they are fabricating in mosque they are fabricating jihadist and this is uh, this is a kind of metastase which is uh, which is uh, happening I, maybe can you get I don't want to. Okay. doctor why did you say that it takes 20 policemen to follow after one potential terrorist. I never heard that before. The, uh, I heard it from from French policemen. Perhaps the French policemen are more lazy. But you have to, you you cannot you cannot follow someone and tell him that he is followed. So you have to hide yourself. The follower has to hide himself. So we have to uh, to be. Uh, they, they are limited in in. in we cannot we cannot he hear their conversation at the same time because we, for this you need you need uh, you need a, 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 a court uh, order so uh, they have to be very discreet uh, when you follow someone in, with a car with your car you have at least to have two cars or three cars so it means three people <laughs> three people driving to follow someone I mean this is uh, this is uh, okay. the accepted rule. I'm going to suggest something. When the autonomous vehicles come, which are which are going to be here by the early 2030s, all right? They have 360 degree cameras all the time, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a situation where, with that uh, surveillance plus facial recognition software, it will be possible to follow anyone, anywhere in any city, not necessarily inside buildings, but any time they move. You know, there's an expression in uh, in uh, English, he couldn't show his face, but that was just a metaphor. Now it's going to be real. Okay? No, what, that we're standing on, on mm -hmm. the beginning of that. You won't have to have 20 people driving people around, following after people when that comes. But you don't have only to follow them, and I mean, you have to detect if they are not going to take a, a knife somewhere in a restaurant and then kill someone outside of a restaurant. I understand. You understand this is... I understand, but... I mean, this, even, this, even if you put them uh, inside this is, this with a court order, uh, 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 something to follow them, that is to say, uh, something inside, inside... Okay, the, tracking, uh, tracking the virus. Tracking, tracking the thing under their skin. You cannot, you have to be to be really behind. It's a, it's a real problem. It's a, you, it's at the same time a, a, a civil right problem. You've defined, you it, you've defined an impossibility because you have thousands of people like this, you would have to have hundreds of thousands of policemen following. It's not going to happen. No, you, you thought this is not, this that's is not going it's, it's so it's going to happen. It's It's going to be replaced with technology. Yeah. No, I don't think that technology will Yes, will it, yes, it will. That because I, I beg to differ you, with you. Okay. You, can, you can prevent that if you have something like on, on a big scale. And uh, But there are always new people 
will come. People who are not radicalized will come. And these are people who are, who are formed, I mean. What is your opinion of the Oslo Accords and uh, how much of an influence has it had uh, toward problems that have arisen following the introduction of the Oslo Accords? Good question. Thank you. I am an almost an expert on the Oslo Agreement. <laughs> I want to tell you something that nobody knows exactly. Nobody knows. Um, in the course of my research, I have been working on this book for uh, since the year 2003. So it means 15 years. I began in 2003. Um, I even began before. Uh, I, in the course of my, my research, I found a document which is called the, Norge the Norwegian, why the Norwegian? In fact, in, in, um, in 2000, the Norwegians were asking themselves why they were involved in the Oslo Agreement. So, they, um, so everybody, all the, all the staff, probably was renewed with, uh, since uh, 93, and they could not find anyone who could answer this question in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So they, they made an investigation, and then they made a report. And in this report, we see that the Oslo Agreement, the writing of the Oslo Agreement, was exactly what Arafat has, has uh, expected a long time ago, in, 18, in the 80s. In, since the 80s, the, uh, Norwegian, the Norwegian were in contact with, uh, with Arafat. Why? Because, uh, uh, according to the report, the, uh, the uh, Norwegian um, uh, ambassador in, in, uh, in Lebanon went to visit, to visit uh, uh, Arafat, to ask him a question. Would you agree, I mean in, the, in, in court, do you agree that we deliver oil uh, to Israel? and uh, can you promise that you are not going to blow up our boats? So Arafat said, yes, I, uh, I agree, and, uh, but, but when I will need you to uh, discuss with the Israelis, please be, uh, be uh, nice with me and, and help me uh, contact the Israelis. So this was the story of the involvement. So they want to know if they had also a role in, uh, in, uh, in the writing of the Oslo Agreement. And they said that one of the, uh, in the reports, uh, the, man who, uh, the minister was Stoltenberg. He was the father of the one who is now the uh, chief of NATO, secretary general of NATO. And he was the uh, foreign minister. And Stoltenberg said, the Oslo Agreement were exactly what, uh, what uh, Arafat has uh, envisaged a long time ago. So at the same time, the Israelis were thinking that they were negotiating and having something. In fact, they signed something which has already been written and decided by Arafat. And so the plan, it's not very complicated. You have also documents in <laughs> In, in people don't, uh, I mean, don't don't know how to hide uh, to hide things, and with, uh, even secret you can find uh, you can find them. There is a book, there, uh, there is a book, a, re, uh, a book on uh, on uh, on the resolution where, which were taken by uh, by uh, by the Palestinians in uh, in exile, and in this book you, there is a resolution which is exactly exactly what the Oslo Agreement are supposed to do. We try to get as many territories as we can, and then we provoke a war again. So the war, was, was there a war or not? He made a mistake or not? Because he was thinking that there would be a war. In fact, Arafat tried to make a war, and nobody knows it. In Israel, nobody knows. Some people in the States know, 
probably in the State Department they know, Israeli no, I mean some Israelis at the top know, but no one is speaking because to one, no one wants to speak about that, everyone is afraid of that. What happened is the following, you remember in 2000 when he decided to create the Intifada, okay? There were a lot of people. Do you remember that uh, when the, uh, the two uh, uh, Russian, uh, I mean, original from Russia, the military men uh, uh, went to Ramallah and they were lynched in Ramallah? Do you remember? Then what did, uh, what did uh, our Prime Minister uh, Ehud Barak did? He said to them, go out and we are going to, because we are going to bomb. So the people who were responsible were not killed. I mean, they bombed, they bombed the, the place, just, just the peanuts. By the way, we, we got all of them. I mean, they were in jail, they were put in jail. But at, that, at this time, Ehud Barak was very afraid to provoke a war. One year after, in 2001, there was, there was, um, there was, there were some people in who, ambassadors of Saudi Arabia in London who said that we are going to have a war, a general war. There was a military man, a, a, a Russian commander, who said we are going to have a war. The uh, in 2001 there was there was a, a meeting of the Arab League in Cairo, and they were all. Help, helping Arafat, and then on the 11th of November, uh, on the 11th of September, 2001, there was the twin tower who, who fell down. Okay, who were destroyed, and uh, and after that, uh, Bush realized what it was con what was happening, and he went, and he said in in one way that there would be nothing existing. In the meantime, we know that the government, the military, there were military exercise and coordination between the Iraqi, the Egyptian, the Jordanian, and the Syrian, and even Lebanon. So, there was someone who was who was who mentioned that in a book, which is the high cost of peace. Um, uh, 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 his name, uh, I, f I forgot his name. Bordansky, yes. Um, Joseph Bordansky. He mentioned that in his book, but I found some other additional proof and declaration which are in my book. So you see, all this was pl planned by, uh, by Arafat, and the, uh, the uh, Israeli were thinking some uh, nice mind in. Uh, were thinking like Yuri Savir, uh, were thinking that we could reach peace, but he is naive, and they are naive because they don't know the culture and they don't have the knowledge. I mean, I can tell you that when uh, when uh, I, I gave my book to to an ambassador, uh, Israeli ambassador, in uh, in some country, I don't want to to say anything, and he was in the legal department of the Ministry of of, uh, of Foreign Affairs. And um, he said that to me, I had meetings with uh, Arafat, with my minister. Uh, it was a woman minister. But I didn't know all this, what you have saying in your book. I wish I would have known. Uh, Thank you very much. I have a question. Yes? I finished yet. Uh, what? Oh, but I'm so loud anyway. I have such a nasal New York Jewish voice, I really don't think I need a mic, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, Dr. Calvo, you were born in Tunisia. Yes. How old were you when you moved to France? Uh, 13 years old. So you really understand the Arab and Muslim culture in a way that most Israelis would not? Uh, kind. And uh, in France, I had some. Uh, in France, I had some people that I knew who were Muslims. That that was my question. Yes, yes. Uh, you had the answer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Les will give All the right. concluding uh, yes. remarks. Our program chair. Uh, 
Dr. Kalba, I really want to thank you and I want to thank our audience for being here this evening for your expertise, your uh, research, your presentation, which was absolutely uh, really wonderful. Um, it's frightening what you said, but I think we must be aware of what's happening and you really outlined it uh, amazingly well. So uh, on behalf of all of us, I really want to thank you for, for putting this book together so many years of research and um, your understanding of the subject, it really is remarkable. And on behalf of all of us, thank you so much and we just wish you all the very best. Thank and thank you all for coming this evening and thank you Lal for, for hosting us. Thank you. If you want to buy the book, I have some. We can talk all the time about peace, but it seems that all of these movements